This is the problem that we did in the lectures. Uh, we are given a system with a 100 picofarad capacitor and this low connect, connect in parallel. And the transmission line has a characteristic impedance of 60, 60 ohm and the length of 1.7 lambda. And the frequency is 159.2 megahertz. And these are all the attributes that we are trying to find out from the transmission line. And we are going to go over the question with the order of going to, toward the generator. So the first step that we would do is to find out the equivalent low impedance of this chunk right here. And because the connector in parallel, so we want to convert the impedance into impedance. So we first convert ZL to YL. And we also want to calculate what the emittance of the capacitor is. And the equivalence emittance will be the sum of these two. And we can also use 1 over Y1 to find out what the, the low impedance are. And this would be the answer. This is what the circuit has become. I would call Z1, this is the C1 that we just get from here, and I would call it as CL prime because it's essentially, it's essentially our equivalent low impedance. And the second step is to find out what gamma 1 is. And gamma 1 is basically the reflection that we get at this point. And we can just plug it into the equations for, gamma, for calculating gamma. And keep in mind that C0 here is the characteristic impedance for the transmission line. The reason to do that is that we always looking at the left side and find out what the closest C0 would be. And in this case, would be the characteristic impedance of the 60 ohm transmission line. And after plugging everything, we this is the answer that we will get. And you can see that there are two components of the reflections. One is the magnitude and the other one is the angle. Uh, for the magnitude, we can use it to calculate the VSWR in the transmission line because the, the reflection index is basically the absolute value of the magnitude. And for the reflection angle, we can use it to calculate Vmax and Vmin. And here is the calculation for VSWR in this 60 ohm transmission line. And we can also calculate what the Vmax and Vmin is once we have the reflection angle. The reason I want to make the reflection angle to be a positive number is because the value of this equation has to be equal to negative because we defined the low psi to be zero and as we moving toward the generator, it will become more negative. And we can find out the location of different Vmax by changing their num value of n. And then we'll start by plugging in n equal to zero, which gives us zero, negative 0 0.27 lambda. And we can do this by having, by changing n to one and two. And keep in mind that Vmax cannot be larger than 1.7 lambda because that's the length of the transmission line. So if we plug in value n is equal to 3 and this will eventually give us negative 1.77 lambda. This is not possible because it's not in the transmission line anymore. And we can use the same method to calculate the minimum positions but using the different equations. And here's the graph for illustrating order maximum and minimum location in the transmission line. And we keep moving to the generator side to find out what the input impedance and input reflection is. Also the input VSWR. And this is the equation for, for calculating CN. And CL prime is the equivalent low impedance. In order to calculate CN, we also need to find out what the value of tangent beta L is. And because lambda is equal to 2 pi and tangent has the period of pi, 
which is equal to lambda over 2. So 1.7 lambda can be simplified into 0 0.2 and beta L will turns out to be 72 degree and tangent beta L will have the value of 3.08. Now we have all the value that we need to plug in the equation for calculating CN. You can pause the video if you want to take a look at the, the calculation process. And this is the result that we will get. And after we have Z in, we can also find out what the input reflection is. And one thing that's very really important is that C0 here, I call it C0 prime, because this is the input impedance of the system. Whatever you put in here, and the system input impedance is 50 ohm in this case. Uh, it's not the C0 for the transmission line because we're looking at the left side. And this would be our result for gamma n. And we can also use the same method to find out what the input VSWR would be, taking the magnitude and then put it into the equations.